endometriosis revisited old wine in new bottle and uh, my time starts now so please note the time and uh, i bring greetings from uh, infertility committee amogs where i have worked for last two years and now i am chairperson of emergency obstetric committee of amogs i bring greetings from nogs and omega hospital nagpur along with my directors dr manisha shambekar dr parul sauji and dr ashish zararia this is the handbook on practical aspects of infertility which we are going to release today and uh, this is by the amox and for the amoxians and i want you all to please uh, uh, keep this copy of this book with you we will be distributing uh, the books to all the members of amox uh, soon and uh, this is something which we have done in the last tenure and uh, today we are going to release this during inauguration uh, endometriosis as we all know is an enigmatic disorder and as our circle of knowledge expands so does the circumference of darkness surrounding it if you look at the incidence of endometriosis it is rising day by day it has got two impacts pain and infertility and 50% is the incidence of infertility in endometriosis i remember in 1992 when i joined as a pg student in gms in nagpur we were only taught that endometriosis ka jo chapter hai to fakt pariksha sathi vachaycha asto karan pariksha vade tyachar long question hai to baki endometriosis amhala kadhi dislesh nahi and now the situation is such that every alternate patient you get endometriosis and now there is a you know we have so many talks on endometriosis so endometriosis is becoming so common even in our country uh, we so uh, come 2022 we got the new guidelines by ishre we were waiting since long for this guidelines because the last guidelines were in 2014 so i must say huzur aate aate bahut der kar di lekin der aaye durust aaye kyunki these are the guidelines jo hame bahut zyada डायरेक्शन देने वाले हैं हाउ टू मैनेज एंडोमेट्रोसिस इन फ्यूचर सो आई जस्ट डिस्कस विद क्लिनिकल विनियट्स विथ यू दिस इज अ केस ऑफ नेहा एंड नेहा सेज आई एम जस्ट नॉट श्योर अबाउट माई मैरिज आई एम ऑलरेडी ट्वेंटी एट एंड एवरी वन सेज दैट दिस टॉल ब्यूटिफुल नेहा शुड फाइंड अ सुटेबल मैच बट दे आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ द पेन सीवियर पेन आई एम हैविंग आई हैव ड्यूरिंग मेन्स सीवियर पेन एंड वॉट अवर रिलेशनशिप आई एम सो स्केयर ऑफ रिलेशनशिप बिकॉज आई हैव पेन विच इज इनटॉलरेबल my gynec says i have severe endometriosis now the how do you predict the presence of endometriosis and this is something which we have been taught during our college days dysmenorrhea dyskinesia hemoptysis catamenial pneumothorax everything is mentioned in the books but the guidelines say that you should empower women to demonstrate their symptoms and this is something which is new what do you mean by empowering women to demonstrate their symptoms they say that you should have questionnaire you should have apps you should have diary which should be maintained by the patients or the young girls which are coming to you with pain in abdomen this is going to help you in objectifying pain and empowering women to demonstrate their symptoms and this is going to help you in the early diagnosis of endometriosis so for early diagnosis what is important is use apps you have no mobile apps you can use that or you can give them questionnaire and you get to know that this patient is probably having some problem which needs further treatment to improve the quality of life in these young girls now what about neha diagnosis of neha do you will you do pva examination in this case anybody can tell me from uh, audience nobody will do pva examination because she is unmarried but friends neha is 20 year she is a professional and she is already working you can do gentle pva examination in such situations or you may do pr examination that is what guidelines say and similarly if you find that the examination during menstruation is normal you should actually move on and go ahead and do imaging imaging is the next step if you are able to diagnose it clinically well and good even if you are not able to diagnose it you should move on and do the examination followed by the investigations and the two investigations which are given in this new guidelines are usg and mri two investigations which are important and they have given equal importance to both the investigations though we all know that anirudh has now explained so nicely about the diagnosis on ultrasound ultrasound is becoming so good nowadays with good machines available then it becomes very easy to diagnose endometriosis but then mri is something which sometimes you need for confirmation if mri is of course costly and it is not available to many there is one more point which i would like to tell you foxe guidelines say that you should do trans abdominal sonography now can anybody tell me why do you we do trans abdominal sonography in endometriosis in case of neha 
if she is a case of severe endometriosis so you need to see the kidneys as well because you have to see whether there is a hydro ureter which can be because of the endometriosis so you have to look for the kidneys and secondary hydronephrosis that is the reason why you should do trans abdominal now the guidelines are clear that trans vaginal ultrasound is recommended to be used in adolescents in whom it is appropriate as it is effective in diagnosis of ovarian endometriomas if a trans vaginal scan is not appropriate then mri trans perineal trans abdominal trans rectal scan may be considered that means you can do trans vaginal sonography in young girls as well if you do it gently with proper counseling for the proper diagnosis of a case of endometriosis this is the new thing which has come in the new guidelines now they have given strong recommendation for ultrasound and mri but they have done a the, they have put a uh, point which is very important there should be a side note a side note which is saying that you may get false negative results so you may miss diagnosis on this ultrasound and mri side note should be put as it is an alternative to laparoscopy plus histopathology or adjunct to laparoscopy so it is an alternative if you are able to diagnose it or you are it is an adjunct to laparoscopy but you should put a side note that you may miss this on ultrasound the next thing is how important is laparoscopy so laparoscopy there is a shift in the approach we were taught that laparoscopy is the gold standard in the diagnosis of endometriosis but friends now the new guidelines say that laparoscopy is no longer the diagnosis gold standard it is now only recommended in patients with negative results and now try to see the approach approach is very important first is imaging results whether they are positive or negative second is empirical treatment empirical treatment and when both of them are unsuccessful then only you do laparoscopy so laparoscopy is step number 3 and this approach is very important this is what i am going to tell you in a short while from now how do we go with this approach but before that i would like to tell you that what about serum markers we are so much used to you know advising c125 to all the patients coming to us with endometriosis or probable diagnosis of endometriosis the guidelines say do not do c125 the message is loud and clear all the guidelines have said that do not do ca125 for the diagnosis of endometriosis you may use it for the prognosis you may use it for seeing whether the patient is responding to the treatment or not but do not do ca125 for the diagnosis and what is the justification justification by the new guidelines say that negative results if you get negative result you will miss the diagnosis right if you get positive result is it relevant ca mantle ke lokana kay vatte are bap re ca ca mhanje cancer so they start thinking and tanche jhop udte aplyala kay vatat nahi he ek test karun gya c125 karun yun ja and don dev tanche jhop udte so they say that you it adds to the anxiety and also adds to the over treatment so it is irrelevant ca125 is irrelevant because if you do it and if it is negative you will miss it and if it is positive it adds to the anxiety now another thing which i was want i wanted to tell you is how the shift in the approach is there the what will you do if there is no you want to go ahead with the treatment will you do empirical treatment or will you do laparoscopy this is very important you see you try to you can take a picture of this also because this is very important what is empirical treatment that is also what is blinded approach so what is blinded approach they say that you do imaging first right after doing imaging you may or may not get result but give hormonal treatment as the first line treatment be happy if the symptoms improve presuming that it is endometriosis and this is exactly what what i have done with uh, one of my friend who is dermatologist and she said i have a wake pain and this pain is specially related to bowel and bladder movements and i don't know what is happening i have taken mri i have uh, consulted orthopedician neurologist but i am not getting results i start put her on dynogis and now she says that we'll go for dinner because i am so happy i don't have pain now she is so happy so what i mean to say is this is the approach be happy if the symptoms improve presuming that it is endometriosis and avoid laparoscopy as far as possible for diagnosis now the next thing is there this is the thing which is new is endometriosis an indication for fertility preservation everybody is talking about fertility preservation cancer everybody is talking about fertility preservation in the girls who do not wish to marry at the age of 35 they said mai abhi anda bana ke rakhti hu aur 4 saal ke baad 5 saal ka shaadi ke bare mein sochungi similarly this girl neha is unmarried she is 28 can you think of fertility preservation in this case this is something which is new 
and they have said that you can think of fertility preservation though the role of in the fertility preservation and benefit of fertility preservation in endometriosis remains unknown because there are many questions which are not answered like what about cost effectiveness what about the uh, data which is there available but then you can think of this so this is a new topic which they have touched upon and that is fertility preservation in endometriosis next is long term monitoring they have also said that you may do or you may not do long term monitoring there is no evidence of benefit but it is should be individualized basis so will you do long term monitoring neha tumhare paas aa rahi hai tumche kade yete hai tumhi tila sa sa mahine bolwal ka mala vatte bolwal harkat nahi hai can you want to see whether she is responding to treatment or not whether the size of the endometrium is increasing or not so long term monitoring is a good thing we can do second clinical vignette is a case of satish and somya hi i am satish i am banker and i am working in sbi me and my wife is somya are happy though he is working in sbi he is happy so that's a good thing and we are married since 2 years but nowadays somya is worried as everyone is asking about good news good baat bhi kadhi yenar good baat bhi kadhi yenar everybody is asking her somya experiences some pain during periods but that is all i mean i don't know why it is just not happening so i am planning to consult doctor this weekend so this weekend satish is going to meet doctor these are the investigations which are done everything is normal how do you proceed guidelines say that if everything is normal and you want to diagnose endometriosis <laughs> you may do laparoscopy in cases of this so clinical examination is important which will give you the idea about the diagnosis and then you may do laparoscopy in such situations in infertile woman in infertile woman with stage 1 and stage 2 endometriosis laparoscopy is a good option but you should actually do c and treat policy so you should tumhala fakt scope takta yeto an tumhala operate karta yet nahi krupa karun karu naka you should be able to do adhesiolysis you should be able to do cannulation you should know how to inoculate the endometrium and then only you start doing this because it should be a c and treat approach that is what the guidelines say so laparoscopy you can do fulguration you can do adhesiolysis that is what they have suggested and 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 very 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 important please 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 do endometriosis fertility index efi 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 now please raise your hands how many of you in the audience do endometriosis fertility index in your day to day clinical practice while doing laparoscopy anybody doing the efi this is something new ye naya hai lekin isko apne ko karne ka hai aur karne ka ich hai karan ka hai mit mal sang to there it is very simple they have seen tubes they have seen fimbria and they have seen ovaries right see tubes see fimbria see ovaries mild moderate severe non functional mild moderate severe non functional these are the categories and then you take history historical aspects and clinical examination on laparoscopy together you get the scoring and this scoring if you know her efi you can work as a part time palmist and you can predict her fertility bachcha tere ko iusa beta ho sakta hai tu pregnancy se kore sakte hai iusa tula iusa tula mul ho sakta you can predict this if you know the efi and that is exactly what we done we have done our one of our director dr parul sahu ji when she was my student during fellowship we, this was her thesis topic 28 women were recruited over one year and we got the scoring natural conception possible with 6 to 10 score 4 to 5 art offered 0 to 3 counseled for art strongly recommended so depending on the score you can say that this is a patient where you can do it and this is exactly what new guidelines say that use afi for iui also use afi for everything because it is validated reproducible and cost effective they have seen tubes they have seen uterus they have seen ovaries and they have seen fimbria so what is the significance of efi if efi is good tubes are not blocked then you can do iui in this patient so if you are planning iui so it is good for every gynecologist who is not doing ivf because it is not for ivf efi is not for ivf efi is for iui that is the reason why you all should do efi now i would just like to tell you about the research which is going on in india about endometriosis endometriosis clinical and genetic research in india is a very big thing happening dr smita mahale supervisor dr grant montgomery is mentor 
and our friend Dr. Rahul Gajbe from ICMR is principal investigator. And I am fortunate to become a principal investigator of this large study which is going on all over India in almost 10 centers. And I am pr very proud to tell you that Omega Hospital with your blessings, we have recruited 120 cases in one year which is actually second highest after Manipal. Manipal has given 150 cases and we have all over India we have given second highest number of cases. Ames Nagpur is there, James Nagpur is there, Ames Lucknow, Lucknow is there. So many big institutes are there and we have given maximum number of patients. So that is a big achievement. Now after this, we come back to Satish and Soumya. Now the Soumya's laparoscopy is done. EFI is done. Her EFI is good. Tichi Sasu Ali Betala, Tichi Ai Betala, Doctor Ata Kasai Kara, Laukarat Laukar Amala Mool Paishi. Karan Ata Khub Zala, Tumi Laparoscopy Ke Liya Ata Kai Tari Kara Apan Amala Mool Paishi. So what is the next thing? Next thing is IUI is on cards. And the uh, guidelines say, that you can do IUI in stage 1 and stage 2 endometriosis if you are planning expectant management, management instead of expectant management you should do IUI it gives you better results so IUI is going to give you good results but again again the value of EFI guidelines say that studies should clarify whether IUI with or without ovarian stimulation is relevant option for women with endometriosis in addition the value of EFI to predict the relevance of IUI could be further investigated. So, see the importance of EFI. They have said IUI when you are doing, take the help of EFI. So, with this, Soumya conceived with IUI and happy end. Now, I come to the last story and that is Kahani Karuna Ki. Karuna is married since 10 years. She is not so lucky. She, her age is 34 years. Her first surgery was done 8 years back. There was an endometrioma. Now, there is recurrence. Her AMH has gone down to 1.2. So, what the guidelines say if and she has done IUI six times, that means she is a case of IVF. Clear cut IVF, IUI done six times, endometrioma recurrence, and that is the reason why it is said that first surgery should be the last surgery. A good surgeon should do surgery for endometriosis, otherwise, the chance of recurrence are very high. So, first surgery should be the last surgery, and you should do it very meticulously with inoculation and not the drainage of cyst. So, surgery prior to IVF. Now, if we are planning IVF in Karuna. So, will you do again surgery in case of Karuna? No. There is no role of surgery in patients of IVF with recurrence of endometriosis because it is going to reduce the AMH levels. It is going to further reduce the ovarian reserve and we don't want to reduce the ovarian reserve now. It is already 1.2. So, we should do the pickup first. Right? Very clear. So, there is no role of surgery. No role of surgery for endometrioma. No role of surgery for deep infant rendering endometriosis also. But it is said that only you can do this for if the pain has severe pain or if there is a problem with the accessibility of follicles. But otherwise, no role. So what do you do then? Hamare Jamane mein, Dohajar Chaudhacha Jama guidelines hotya. Amcha Jamane Amade Amala Shikwad hoti ki endometriosis te patient la char mene agonis dya char patini success rate varto. That was Salam et al. in 2014. They have said that four times increase in the improvement in the success rate if you do agonist therapy for three to four months. And there is a complete U turn on this point in new guidelines. It is said that there is no role of medical therapy because it will further suppress the HPO axis. And there is no role of adjunct therapy, no role of agonist. And this is what is the theory by Giorgio et al. Giorgio et al has said that if you give general agonist to this patient, what will happen? Because of general agonist, the ovarian suppression is there, so it is not to be done. So what will you do? Well, suppose we want to do the surgery because there is a huge endometrioma. What will you do? You will plan the pickup first. How will you plan the pickups? Do antagonist. Do the pickup. Then do surgery. After doing surgery, Start GNRH agonist, give agonist for 4 months and then do transfer, frozen embryo transfer. So that is the answer. Understood? Do pick up first, then do surgery, then give agonist and then do frozen embryo transfer. Because agonist, if given before transfer, will help you not only in transfer but it will help you in getting good endometrium as well. So it is good but it should be done in this way. Then I will just few uh, touch few points two minutes please give me two minutes 
वन इज डज एआर टी एज एनी इफेक्ट ऑन एंडोमेट्रोसिस आता गुगल के पेशंट आते तुम्हारा हा प्रश्न विचार आईवीएफ के लिए एंडोमेट्रोसिस का परिणाम हो रहा है तो तेना सांगा लगे कि आईवीएफ ने तुम एंडोमेट्रोस जो तुला प्रेग्नसी राहली तो तुला एक दगड़ा मे दोन पक्षी मारने है तो तुला बाढ़ हो रहा है आणि तुझं एंडोमेट्रोसिस पण कमी होणार आहे सो दॅट इज वॉट वी हॅव टू टेल देम दॅट इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू इफ यू कन्सीव देन वेन यू आर डुईंग यू आर डुईंग ओव पिक अप इफ देर इज अ चॉकलेट सिस्ट यू शुड गिव अँटीबायोटिक प्रोफेरेक्सिस अँड वेन यू यू आर डुईंग एमरिओ ट्रान्सफर यू शुड बी व्हेरी केअरफुल सो दे आर अ फ्यू पॉईंट्स अँड वॉट अबाउट एंडोमेट्रल सपोर्ट वी रिअली मिस डॉक्टर बी एन चक्रवर्ती अ ग्रेट ग्रेट आय व्ही एफ कन्सल्टंट अँड एआरटी स्पेशलिस्ट ही वॉज अ स्ट्रॉंग सपोर्टर ऑफ डायट्रोजेस्ट्रॉन and dietrostron is a immunomodulator therefore you can give dietrostron as a as a neutral phase support in such situations so that is what is important what about non medical treatment chinese china se to hum log paise darte hain so chinese treatment herbs physiotherapy acupuncture exercise diet everything they have said that they regarding non medical strategies there is no clear evidence that any non medical intervention for women in endometriosis will be but of benefit in increasing the chances of pregnancy so non medical ben- no benefit or no evidence of benefit so this is the t- photograph taken of corona during cesarean section happy days are here again in the life of corona and see there is still there are some endometriotic spots see the intestines still adherent but she is happy she has got a baby girl now and she is very happy so what are the changes in the guidelines i'll sum up one laparoscopy is no longer a gold standard right you don't need laparoscopy for diagnosis of endometriosis two bye bye danazol tumhala athavto itle senior lokanna athavsel danazol kiti vaprayacho apan apan pratyek patientna danazol daycho they have clearly said that danazol is not a good drug good bye danazol good bye danazol no role of danazol secondly no role of luna also laparoscopic alna ablation then uh you try now ablation sorry then what about ultra long agonist protocol ultra long agonist protocol selam theory has no role in the treatment of endometriosis then efi 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 so take home message for all of you from today onwards whenever you are doing laparoscopy for a patient of endometriosis please spare some time and just write the endometriosis fertility index and on the in the discharge card of the patient and say that this is the efi and we are actually planning this treatment depending on the efi that will look really great it will show that you are tum zamane ke sath chal rahe ho ye aapko dikhana hai aur wo dikhane ke liye aap log abhi chalu karo aapke laparoscopy ke discharge card mein start writing efi do that then fertility preservation need of ours and recurrence is something which is discussed and cancer is also discussed in details in the new guidelines so that is all so these women are trapped by endometriosis one woman with endometriosis express her views she says when you are healthy you are have many dreams when you are healthy you have many dreams but when you are ill you have just one and that is to get out of that disease or that problem so what we need to have is not only sympathy but empathy for the patients of endometriosis thank you very much thank you for patient listening thank you thank you dr chaitanya shambhakar